All right, let's go to the Word of God. Jonah chapter 2, verses 9 through 10. I feel my voice coming back. I feel good. But I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay what I vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. Verse number 10, verse number 10 says, So the Lord spoke to the fish. Somebody shout, God talks to fish. And when he talked to the fish, the fish did exactly what God told it to do, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. Let's go back to verse number nine. And I know Big Mama told you never to write in your Bible, but writing in your Bible will not send you to hell. Look at your neighbor and say, that won't send you to hell. That will not send you to hell. But I need for you to underline three words because this morning I'm going to give you three words and I'm going to try to make sense out of all three words. The first word I need for you to underline, it says, but I will sacrifice to you with the voice. Underline voice, voice. With the voice of thanks given, I will pay what I have vowed. Second word I need for you to underline is vowed. I will pay what I vow. Salvation is of the Lord. Verse number 10. So the Lord spoke to the fish. And the third word I need for you to underline is vomited. And it vomited Jonah onto dry land. This morning I want to talk to you from this thought. I'm a vessel of thanksgiving. I am a vessel of thanksgiving. A vessel is just simply a container. A vessel could be a ship. It could be a, it could be a, a piece of anything that transports one thing from one place to another. But this morning when I use the word vessel, I'm really talking about the person next to you. And the person next to you, the person beside you, the person behind you and in front of you, they are all vessels. And somebody ought to be glad this morning that God is looking for vessels to you on the earth. That's why the Bible says present your bodies, your vessel as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God. And the person sitting beside you this morning and the person sitting behind you and the person sitting in front of you they are all vessels and this morning you should have asked at least one of those vessels what's in your container? What are you carrying this morning? And I believe this morning even before we move to Thursday on next week and celebrate Thanksgiving eating turkey and dressing, you should wake up and realize this morning that you are a vessel and you should be a vessel of thanksgiving. In other words, if you ain't got nothing else in your container, you ought to always have a good thank you Jesus in your container. Because when you stop and think about your life just for a few seconds, you will realize that God has been mighty good to you. You will realize that God has been better to you than you could ever be to yourself. You will realize that God has kept you from danger seen and unseen. You will realize that God is your provider. He's the giver of every good and perfect gift. And when you really stop and look your life over, I wish I had somebody right now that would realize hey, I'm a vessel and this morning, I'm a vessel of Thanksgiving. When I look and take inventory on my life, I realize that I still got a roof over my head. I, I, I'm still in my right mind. I still got clothes on my back. I, I, I still got, got a job. God is still meeting my knees. And this morning, all I want to do is let God know that I'm a vessel. I wish I had at least 30 vessels of Thanksgiving that could stop right now in the introduction and just say, Pastor, I hate to mess up your sermon, but I want to stop and tell God that I wish I had somebody that would just throw their pocketbook clean on the other side of the room and say, sorry, excuse me. The reason I hate this way is because God has been good to me. Has God been to anybody good to anybody else in this building? Well, I got good news for you because you need to realize that there's power in this thing called the vow. I got two questions I want to ask you under the vow. And the first question is, are you operating in your vocation? Look at your neighbor and say vocation. Now, the sad thing about it is that most of you are already looking at your clock right now. For those of you that have to go to work, how many got to go to work tomorrow? Many of you will look at your clock tonight at midnight, and you'll be like, dog, I got to go back to work. And I see heads shaking, and I see heads nodding. Can I tell you, that's because you're working a job. But God never intended for any of us to work a job. God expected for us to answer the call. That's why in Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 1 in the King James, it says, I beseech you, brothers, by the mercy of God, that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are 
call. God called us each to a vocation. And that's why the Bible says your gifts will make room for you. It's the saddest thing in life to be on a job that's not using your gift. And so many people go to a job and they go to work, but God called you to work your calling. Vocation in the Latin comes from a word called vacari, which means that God is calling each of us to an area of ministry. And how many know that your gift will make room for you when you start walking in your calling? So the question on the table is, are you operating in your vocation? Second question I need to ask you, if you're not operating in your vocation, then maybe you're operating on vacation because Jonah didn't go and do the vocation that God gave him to do when God told Jonah to go to Nineveh what did he do he got on a ship to go to Tarshish to take what vacation and so many of you know what God told you to do but you're not doing it God told you to move in it two years ago but you've been on vacation and can I tell you that God is calling you off of vacation and he wants you to walk in your vocation. Can you remember when Jesus was 12 years old and they lost him? They didn't know where he was and Joseph and his mother automatically thought that he went on vacation. But you remember what Jesus told them in Luke's gospel chapter 2 verse 49? Jesus says, I'm not on vacation. He says, didn't y'all know? That I must be about my father's business. Would you look at your neighbor and say, when are you going to wake up and take care of the father's business? Because you know you got business that he told you to do. I don't know why you're sitting here acting like you don't know what you're supposed to be doing. But would you tell your neighbor, this is your season and this is your time to take care of your father's business. I thank you. But this is the reason why I truly thank him on this morning. Because just like Jonah, when he was in the belly of the fish, God looked at him and said, this is what you deserve. This is what you deserve. Because your own choices and your own decisions got you in this predicament. But because our God is so just, because he is the God of a second chance, he looked at Jonah's situation. He said, but just because you remember to say thank you. He said, even you, you said thank you in Sunday service before Thanksgiving. You didn't wait to Thursday. He said, Jonah, just because you said thank you, I went deep into my Hebrew dictionary. And God said, I use one Hebrew word that's called Vyake. And God spoke Vyake. And when he spoke Vyake, Vyake means to let out. In other words, the fish heard God speak one word, vayake. Look at your neighbor and say, vayake. See, some of you have been stuck in poverty. Some of you have been stuck in sickness. Some of you have been stuck in a troubled marriage. But can I, can I tell you, I serve the God of vayake. And one vayake from God will literally spit you out of your situation. And when you come out, you may have some residue left on you. You may still have a little stench on you. But the good news is you ain't in it no more. And since you ain't in it no more, you ought to give God a praise right now. 